and these are the thanks and blessings, all the thanks and praises is due to Allah. And as such, we thank Him, we praise Him, we seek His help, and we seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and the evil outcomes of our of our actions. For whomsoever Allah guides, there is none that can misguide Him. And whomsoever Allah allows to go astray, there is none that can guide Him. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah, Him alone, He has no partner. I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, was his slave and his final messenger. As for what follows, the best form of speech is the Book of Allah. The best form of guidance is the guidance that was brought by Muhammad The evil affairs are the innovations within the religion. For every innovation is bid'ah, and every bid'ah is misguidance, and every misguidance will ultimately lead one into the hellfire. Dear Muslim brothers and sisters, um, I'd like to congratulate each and every one of us for making it to the Jum'ah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called you when you answered the, 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 the call. For you is a great reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu idha nudhiya idha nudhiya lishfalat min yawm al-jum'ah fas'aw ila dhikrillah wa daru zayya. It is for many of us, we are coming from work. Some of us were at home. Some of us, we had to leave work to come uh, answer the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For that is a great reward. There is many people, many Muslims, for one reason or another, they were not able to make it. So in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should consider that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose us in particular to be in this blessed place on Yawm al Jum'ah. And we did it, Allah, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he reminds us, he says, وَمَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتٍ مِنْ بُيُوتِ اللَّهِ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَيَتَدَارَسُونَهُ بَيْنَهُمْ إِلَّا نَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَةِ He says that there will, be, there will not be a people who have gathered in one of the houses of Allah reciting the Book of Allah and teaching one another the Book of Allah, except, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will put upon them or, or cover them or put, put upon them with sakina. Sakina is the tranquility, the peace that we are all looking for. And he also said that وَبَشِيَتْ هُمْ رَحْمَةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will encompass us. He will cover us with his rahmah, his mercy. The angels of Allah will pretty much, they will encompass us as a form of protection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to mention each and every one of us by our name to the guests, his angels that are closest to him. So he's going to mention each and every one of us by, by our name to the angels that are the most closest to him. So this is a great ni'mah. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning your name to the company, the, the, the angels that are closest to him. This is what else can one ask for? This is a great blessing uh, that has been uh, given to us. Just for the fact that we are, we are able to make it to the Jum'ah as he called and we answered the, the, uh, the call. In another, uh, in another um, ayah of the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرُكُمْ وَشْكُرُونِي وَلَا تَذْكُرُونِ Remember me. Remember me and I will remember you. And thank me for all the blessings that I have given. 
and do not uh, deny any of my blessings that I have given you. This is the reminder, dear Muslim brothers and sisters. As we also know, the, uh, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ That, like, we should remind one another about the, uh, our obligations. Remind one another about our obligation, about, you know, making dhikr of Allah, remembering of Allah. That the reminder, even though we all know this, the reminder does benefit the Muslim or the, the believer. The, the reminder will always benefit the believer. We'll go into our, our discussion, inshallah. I wanted to call your attention, dear Muslim brothers and sisters, to one of the greatest, um, one of the greatest um, chapter of the Quran, one of the greatest surah of the Quran, which is Surah Al-Ikhlas. Surah Al-Ikhlas means sincerity. Uh, translation, the various translators, they will translate it sincerity, or you may find it called purity, or you may find it called fidelity. You may also find it called by another name altogether, at-tawheed, which means the monotheism, the Islamic monotheism. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he goes on to say that this particular surah is only four verses. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ اللَّهُ السَّمَدْ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفْوًا أَحَدْ Only four verses. He goes on to say that these four verses are equal to one-third of the whole Qur'an. As you know, the whole Qur'an consists of 114 chapters, various sizes. When you put them together, it seems that four lines will equal a third of that. That doesn't compute very well. This is what our Prophet Wasallam said. He goes on to say, the Prophet Wasallam, ajuzu ahadukum an fi Quran. Is it difficult for one of you to read in one night a third of the Quran? He's talking to his companion. And then they said, um, pretty much, yeah, it's going to be difficult for every, every, any one of us to read a third of the Quran within the one night. So they didn't know what he was talking about. So he, and this is where he said, this is where he said, Qul huwa Allahu ahad fa'adulu thuluf al-Qur'an. That, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, referring to the surah, equals a third of the Qur'an. The companion Abu, Abu Darada, I mean Allah be pleased with him, said that the Prophet said, that, hatta yak, hatta, if any one of you should read ten times, if any one of you should read Ahad ten times, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will build for him a, a, a palace in paradise. So you'll have a palace in paradise waiting for you. If you are able to read this chapter ten times. And there was a story that was uh, told. It was said that one of the leaders of the Ansar, one of the leaders of the Ansar, the Ansar are the people of Medina. So we have two of uh, the believers during those times were divided into two ma major groups. We have the Muhajirun. Those are the people that uh, migrated from Mecca and they came into Medina to meet up with the Ansar, which are the original people of Medina. 
And there was a time where one of these leaders was um, was leading, he was chosen to be a leader, so he was leading the people in Salat. Every time he would lead the people in Salat, he would recite Surah to you know, he will recite Surah to Fatiha, and then he will follow it up with Surah to Nisraj. So every time he will lead the Salat, this is how, how he, he goes about it. And when, when, he, he, when he leads the Salat, and recite Surah Al Fatiha, and he forgets to read the Surah Al Ikhlas. He will actually, when he remembers, he will come back and he will read Surah Al Ikhlas. So he kept doing this. The companions, the people, they pretty much got upset about it after a while. So they they wanted to address the situation. So they asked him, "Oh, our leader." This is your habit. You've been reading Surah Al Fatiha and Surah Al Ikhlas all the time, every time you lead us in prayer. What's, what's, what's with that? Uh, don't you know any other? Don't you know any other Surah that you can follow it up with Surah Al Fatiha? He said, Of course, of course I know. I know, I know, I know other Surahs. And then, so why don't you read it? Why don't you read other Surahs for us? He said, This is, this is the way I am. You are welcome to choose another leader to lead you in Shola. So this is how he replied to them. And so the people they were they were patient with that. And then after a while they met up with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then they brought this the situation up to him. They told him, Wallahi, we are very happy with our leader. We have no problem with him except this one thing that he does. Whenever he leads us in prayer, he will read Surah Tul Fatiha, and then he will follow it up with Surah Tul Ikhlas. And this has been his habit, he has not changed it. He just wished that you will address the situation for us so that the people can be satisfied. So the Prophet told the people to call him so he can talk to him. The person came, and the Prophet told him, like, why are you doing this? What's making you do this? Don't you know any other surah that you can read for the people so that they can be satisfied with your leadership? He said, I know a lot of other surah. But this surah, Surah, surah Al-Ikhlas, mentions the name and characteristics of my Lord. And I just, I just love to read the names and attributes of my Lord. So this was his reply to the Prophet. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at that time, he said to him, Because of your love for this surah, you have, it has caused you to enter the paradise. So from this, we can uh, extract that if somebody loves this surah, Surah Al-Ikhlas, then this, may be a path for him to enter the lofty paradise. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in one occasion heard a man, he was making dua. He heard the man saying, Inni ashhadu innaka anta Allah. Al ahad al samad al ladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufu al ahad. This translates, I bear witness that you are Allah, there is no God, there is no God or deity but you, the one, the eternal. He has not, he has not given birth, nor was he born. And to, whom, and to whom no one is equal to. And the Prophet Wasallam said, when he heard that, he said, by Allah, the one who, in whose hands is my soul. This person has asked Allah by his greatest names, for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not uh, deny uh, what the person is asking. 
So when you say this dua that this person said, it's safe, but Allah will not deny anything that you are asking of him. Anything that you will ask for him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give to you. So this is Surah Al-Ikhlaq, dear Muslim brothers and sisters. In Arabic, when something has great importance, they seem to give it many different names. For instance, when we read the Quran, you will find Yawm uh, Al-Qiyamah, the Day of Judgment, represented or called by many different names. Amongst these is Al-Rashia, which is the overwhelming, Al-Qiyamah, which is the day of standing, al hafa which is uh, the day of the reality or the truth, al waqia the day of the great event, uh, Yom al jam the day of gathering, and there's various different names, Yom al din you know, they'll count more than 40 different names for this one particular, one particular uh, event. Similarly, anything of great importance to the Arabs, they seem to give it many names, like the sword in Arabic has many different names. The lion in, Ara in Arabic has many different names. So, Surah al ikhlas is no different. For that, the scholars have counted many different names for this particular surah. When we look it up, we see uh, maybe 30 different names for it. Uh, most popular one of them, of course, Surah Al-Ikhlas. The second popular one that we know of is Surah Al-Tawheed. But it has other names. Uh, throughout the time, people have given it many different names. <coughs> Some of the names that uh, was given to it is Al Mukashkasha. This is a low part of pronoun where Al Mukashkasha, which means uh, the cure. The cure to what? The cure to uh, shirk, the polytheism, associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or giving other people attributes that belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And amongst his name is also Al Ma'rifa. Al Ma'rifa, which means the knowledge. It seems that this surah encompasses all of the knowledge together. Uh, uh, amongst his name is Al Asas, which means the foundation, the foundation of the religion, pretty much. And amongst its name is Al Muqarraba, which means uh, uh, when you read the surah, pretty much you're seeking nearness. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are just some of his names that I came across when I was doing uh, trying to gather information about Surah Al Ikhlas. Uh, Surah Al Ikhlas was um, one of the earliest uh, surahs that was uh, revealed to the Prophet. <coughs> it was revealed during the time. Um, they were in Mecca. Uh, there are other scholars that said perhaps it had been revealed during the time in Mecca, but later on it was revealed again in the time of Medina. Uh, but the most uh, uh, the most uh, correct view will be that it was revealed in Mecca because of the events, the 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 subject of the matter that it is uh, delving into. So he's talking about Allah. And we found many of the surahs that was uh, revealed in Mecca focuses many times on Allah. And Surah Al-Ikhlas is no different than, than those in that respect. So whenever a surah or uh, an ayah is revealed, there has to be uh, a reason for, for it. 
uh, our, our colors, they will call it as Bible Zoom. The reasons for its the reasons for its revelation. So this particular surah was revealed for a particular purpose. It was during a time where the Meccans, the polytheists, the pagans, the Quraysh, was giving the Muslims a hard time. Uh, trying to negotiate because, you know, now that the Islam is getting popular, is getting uh, momentum in, in Mecca. So the Quraysh, they became very, very worried about, you know, their, li their livelihood, what they know to be truth around them. For centuries, this is what they are used to. And now there is uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is come, is making da'wah, is disturbing the peace, in fact, in, uh, in Mecca. He's causing trouble within family members. He's causing people to just be disrespectful towards their parents by joining, you know, by listening to the da'wah, he's making people not come home. So he's causing a lot of trouble in the, in the community. Uh, for the uh, for the Quraysh, so they want this to be stopped at all costs. They tried everything they could. They sent uh, one of their last efforts was to send uh, his uncle to go talk to him about the da'wah. This needs to stop. It's too much. We can you know, you're breaking up our society pretty much. But of course, the passion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is to carry uh, the message of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Take a short break, inshallah, we'll come back. Aqulu ma tasma'oon wa atathiru ma hali wa lakum salitahir al-muslimun ittathiru rabbakum inna hufu wa lakum rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين. So all of this is going on. They approach uh, one of the leaders. Uh, his name was uh, Amir Ibn Tufail. They sent him to go talk to the prophet to stop this da'wah that he's doing, to stop, you know, calling the people to this Islam, this monotheism that is disturbing their community. So he approached the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He told him, Oh Muhammad, you've caused a lot of pain and anguish in our community. You've caused mothers to lose their children, their, their, their boys. You've caused so many trouble in our community. What, what will it take for us, for you to give up this, this religion of yours. So he said, if it is money that you want, you want to be rich, we can collect a lot of wealth, we can gather all of the wealth and give it to you so that you'll be the richest person in, in Mecca. But that didn't uh, uh, satisfy the Prophet Okay. So if it is women that you want, we can gather the best women that we have, and we will have you to marry them. So would that solve the issue? But of course the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam refused with that. And then his third, his third, uh, his third attempt, he said, Perhaps, maybe it is the shaitan, the jinn, that they have taken over you. So let us perform the ruqya, the, I believe in English, like exorcism, right? Uh, let, let's perform the ruqya. Let's try to cure you from your uh, possession. Maybe something is possessing you. The prophet, there is nothing. <laughs> Possessing you. Therefore, he refused all of these attempts. 
that uh, the Quraysh try to uh, push for. In the Kaaba, of course, there were many, many other, many, many other idols in the Kaaba. It is said that in the Kaaba and around the Kaaba, at one time there was about 350 different idols uh, that the people worship. Uh, for all of these idols, they were put in there at one point or another. The Arabs, they have the record of who is who uh, in the community. So they will know one particular idol, they will know who put it there, and the, the um, importance of it. So they asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with all of this, okay, why don't you uh, tell us about your Lord? They said, they said to describe your Lord for us. Sifla na Rabbak. One subhu. Describe your Lord for us and tell us, like, who is his father? Who is his grandfather? Who is his great grandfather? You know, who, which lineage is he? Who is your Lord? And who, who is his son? Who, who did he give birth to? And who is his son's son? Right? So there are two ways it's going lineage going up and lineage going down. So in Arabic, I believe they, they call it when it's going up to different fathers, it's called the Nata, right? And when it's going down to your son and his, your son's son and the son's son's son, like right that, they call it Hasab. This is very important for the Arab, uh, uh, Arabs altogether. So for each of those gods, they will know all of that. So now they're asking the Prophet, okay, you talk about your Lord all of this time. Who, where did he come from? Who is he? Where is he? So when they ask that question, the angel Jibreel came to the Prophet to reveal this Surah Al-Ikhlas. Stars, when they ask about the question, the answer was, Kun huwallahu ahad. So this statement is an answer to the question that's not been, been found. However, it's found in the Sunnah. The, the scholars, uh, they tell us whenever we read the Quran, can we find this word, uh, a sentence that is started with the word kun, then we should know that when the ayah was revealed, it was revealed because there was a question that was being uh, posed to the Prophet So we find there is about, I believe, five, ver five uh, chapters in the Quran that starts off with this word, Qul. So Qul means say, right? So that's Qul Hu Allah Ahad. Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbi Nas. Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbi Al-Falaq. There's Kul Huwa, Kul, Kul Hiya, Kul, like Surah Al Jin. Kul, Kul Hiya Ilayya, that's correct. Kul, Kul Ilayya, it says, say that it has been revealed to me. I'm sorry, I'm getting the verse. But say that it has been revealed to me. Okay? I'm now who some are not a woman that is in. That there's a, a bunch of jinn that listen to the Quran. So these are some of the surahs that start off with Qul. So there's about five of them. There's other ayats in the Quran. Many that will start with this word as well. Qul. We should know that there's a question that's being posed. So we should find out what that question is. When we read the word Qul in the Quran. This is what the scholars are telling us. So coming back, so the Prophet started, the Quran was revealed to the Prophet to say, Qul huwallahu ahad. Say, he is Allah, the one. Allahu as He is as a summit 
is translated by the different translators as eternal or eternal, ever living, like something that is always there, right? And in Arabic, it is uh, translated linguistically as like, uh, there's a goal and you are heading towards that goal. Another word was used as us, like to, to focus on one, one point. So this is the essence of a summer. So we were understanding everything in the creation is looking towards this a summer, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything in the creation is dependent upon a summer, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is nothing in this world that is free from a summer, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, the opposite is also true. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being a summer, his essence, his being is, is wajib, is necessary. Okay? He's, he is uh, not born. There was no time where he was not there. Right? And he is, he has no ending. There will be no time where he won't be there. So he's always there at all times. And everything else in the creation is pretty much heading towards that. Asking a summer for everything that they need so that they give it in a summer. This is the way a summer is uh, explained to us. A summer is one of the many names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As you have, as you have as you may know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah has 99 names. Inna lillahi tis'a wa tis'i'ina isman. Allah has 99 names. Man ahsaha, whoever is able to memorize it, dakhal al-jannah. Whoever is able to memorize this is going to enter the paradise. So this is one of the many names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His names are perfect without any imperfection. His being is without error. And everything else besides him is in error. So the human being is capable of making error. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows everything. His knowledge encompasses everything before the creation and after the creation as information that the, the the earth the world is going to be gone everything else that is on the face of the earth is going to be gone Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran Kullu man aliha fine. everything is going to be not there the only thing that's going to be left is the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On that day, Allah is going to say, Liman in the mood. Who does this, who does this dominion belong to? There will be nobody there to enter that. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to say, Lillahi al-wahid al-qahar. The dominion belongs to Allah, the one, the irresistible. So we'd like to end here, inshallah. Uh, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in knowledge. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with the knowledge that we have received. If we made any error, please forgive us. It is from ourselves and from Shaytan. And any benefit that you receive, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, please let's get up to prayer. Okay, inshallah. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي الصلاة حي الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Directly where the Imam is, uh, is praying, you should be behind the Imam, not to the side. The line always 
are uh, behind the imam. So if you're in the back, uh, please come to the middle. Uh, the reward is there for you. Inshallah. Barakallahu. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الشراط المستقيم شراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة فتلا نار حامية تسقى من أين عانية ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من دو وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعيها رادية في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرور مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمارق مسفوفة وزرادي مبثوثة أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نسبت وإلى الأرض كيف فتحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمشيطر إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم الله أكبر سمي الله لنا الحمد الله أكبر Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الشراط المستقيم شراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المكذوب عليهم ولا الضالين قل هو الله أهد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله 
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Assalamu alaikum. Um, Salatu Asr, we'll pray it at uh, the Namaz Jama'at time, we'll pray it at Masjid, which is at 2.45, because it comes in around uh, 2.37-ish, but we'll pray at 2.45 here, so we'll do that. So if you're around, please stick around. If you're blocking somebody, waiting for the Salah, please help us move your car, so that uh, they can go to their place of work or whatever they want to do. Thank you. And also, we have um, Gen Care outside. Uh, they help seniors with insurance, getting Medicaid insurance, or whatever kind of insurance that you may need. Please try to talk to them and they will be able to help you out with whatever facilitation you need for your uh, uh, medical insurance. Next week, Friday, inshallah, is when we have the uh, healthcare program here at Moshe Baru, and that program is free for everybody. We don't ask for any personal uh, information, and a lot of those information is kept with us for a long time or nothing like that, so please, Use that um, to your benefit. Thank you. Uh, I miss anything else? And Imam Usman uh, from uh, Mali did send his salam and he said you'll see him soon. So please keep him in your door. Uh, may Allah grant him safe travel back here and uh, keep those that he's going to leave behind safe and keep us safe to see him and meet him, inshallah. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Ustaz uh, Musa, for the uh, time of Budba, stepping in at the last minute. Uh, we know you weren't ready for that, but um, we uh, just threw you right there. The normal imam that usually would do it had uh, an engagement that came just before we knew what the time is. So thank you, uh, Rabbi Samuel, I reward you and grant you uh, more knowledge. Thank you. Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.